uh, she was a wonderful girl when it happened and I always said that I was pro-choice in a grey way as in if someone was raped and they, and they were going to damage themselves carrying that child then they should have a choice but actually my perspective has changed and the reason it's changed is humans can overcome traumatic situations we are very powerful especially if we have a community to support us now the reason one of the reasons I changed is I understood what happens in an abortion procedure this is a sofa clamp a sofa clamp is made of stainless steel it's about 13 inches long the business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide and there are rows of sharp teeth this is a grasping instrument when it gets a hold of something it does not let go the abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg once he has a firm grip the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body one by one the rest of the limbs are removed along with the intestines the spine and the heart and lungs hey guys I did a poll on the community section of my YouTube channel yesterday in anticipation of making this video and that poll was to ask uh, who among those watching are pro-choice and pro-life uh, pro-choice is the side of the argument that that women should have a choice to be able to abort um, or terminate their pregnancy and pro-life is the opposite that uh, abortion and termination of human life is, is is deemed wrong so it's predominantly up to now in favor of pro-life so in favor of the fact that abortion is wrong and I know it's a very powerful topic and it's a very emotional topic for many people and I want to say that this video passes no judgment on anybody uh, uh, in what I discuss and I never would however I think knowledge is power and I think there is something absent at the moment and if you look at the marches for pro-life and the marches for pro-choice you can see there's a big difference in the the, the approaches of these two groups one is very warring and, and one is very peaceful and that needs to be addressed because there's something to that now the reason I have an opinion on this for all I don't have a womb is it takes two people to make a baby and let me tell you a personal very personal story I've, I've wanted to talk about it online for a while uh, I just didn't really find the time or the, the courage and it's such a, a big topic I think it's time I, I did because I can offer some perspective at least from uh, my heart on the topic so when I was younger uh, unfortunately let me start at the beginning when I was a child and they would ask me what I want to be when I'm older I would say I want to be a dad which is a very unusual thing for a child to say but I really wanted to be a father and I still can't answer why that was in me perhaps uh, I was born that way I don't know and aside from that I'd say I want to be a, a dad a pastor or a children's nurse and these things stuck with me until I got older and started thinking about money and then they went away so I wanted these things and when I was 18 uh, I was young and stupid and drinking and I met a girl and she was pregnant and I bonded with this baby for nine months and I won't get into that story too much but I lost the chance to be a father and it hit me very very hard I then ended up in a relationship uh, with another woman not long after that and I was at that point kind of calling out to the universe for all I'd lost my way with God uh, like why did that happen to me how unjust and I was really feeling like a victim that that had happened 
And then this other new girlfriend of mine uh, came to me with a smile and she knew what the pain I was going through from that. And she said, you're going to be a father. And obviously she was then pregnant, like I say, I was young and I wasn't married. And uh, now I, I very much see the benefits of having children in marriage and not before. And I was so elated. I was so happy. I was going to get that chance. A few months later, her parents, who are not the most natural of humans, they, they consume a lot of alcohol, um, still do, uh, from what I know. They talked her around to getting an abortion. And I received a phone call uh, whilst they were on their way to the clinic. And uh, there was very little I could do to stop it. And my child was aborted. This sent me into a very strange place and I, I literally suffered mentally for that for a long time. Uh, we got back together and she did it again. And uh, the, the damage that did to me is still in me today. And during my times of praying and, and crying over this, I always said, why did you take my chance to be a father? And uh, God hears you. Because now look, screaming that for a decade, and now I've got more than 100 children who call me dad. So he made use of that, that void that it created in me. But it triggered uh, a lot of problems in my life. Uh, drug abuse being one of them. I was uh, not myself. I, I, I was pretty crazy back then. I didn't care about anything. I felt the world had wronged me uh, in, in such a way that I, I was able to wrong the world in return. And I broke the law and I hurt people and uh, sex became something completely non-sacred and at the same time I was scared of sex. Uh, I didn't want to have intimacy with people because of the pain it had brought to my life. And it uh, played a big role in my remaining celibate for so long until uh, once I calmed myself down from the drugs and everything I, I moved to a state of celibacy because I couldn't feel it, this want for it, because I was fearful of the damage it can do. But actually I understood the sacred nature of, of making love to somebody and I understood that it creates life. And I think that's important above all else that humans address sex in that way, not as some toy that you run around playing with. You don't want to keep tying your, tying your soul energetically to people, you know, like just random night stands. I mean, I know people like that and they're a mess. They are a mess. And when I was doing it, I was a mess. And my friends were a mess. It's just very unhealthy. So the effect it had on me that I had no say in that uh, was profound and it damaged me for many years. Uh, definitely, definitely put me into drug abuse. Definitely. And amongst all of that, I tried to kill myself as well. Um, and that definitely contributed to that as well. So as a man, from a male perspective, the argument that it's a woman's choice is very difficult for me because I know the damage it does to some men when they have no say in this. Now people say, but it's not your body. And I agree, it's not my body. Why should I be able to make decisions about another person's body? But let me also tell you, my friend uh, was raped. And she's a wonderful girl, a woman. Uh, she was a wonderful girl when it happened. And I always said that I was pro-choice in a gray way, as in if someone was raped and they were going to 
damage themselves carrying that child, then they should have a choice. But actually, my perspective has changed. And the reason it's changed is humans can overcome traumatic situations. We are very powerful, especially if we have a community to support us. Now, the reason, one of the reasons I changed is I understood what happens in an abortion procedure. So I want to play you some footage uh, that rocked my soul and especially seems I know my own children went through this. This is a sofa clamp. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. This was the baby's brains. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. He removes the placenta and any leftover parts of the baby with a curette, scraping the lining of the uterus for any remaining tissue. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. For the woman, this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm Dr. Anthony Levitino, and in the early part of my career as an OBGYN, I performed over 1,200 abortions. One day, after completing one of those abortions, I looked at the remains of a pre-born child whose life I had ended, and all I could see was someone's son or daughter. I came to realize that killing a baby at any stage of pregnancy for any reason is wrong. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at or what you've done, you can change. Make a decision today to protect the preborn. Thank you for your time. I will no longer do any more abortions. When you finally figure out that killing a baby that big for money is wrong, that it doesn't take you too long to figure out it doesn't matter if the baby is this big or this big or this big or maybe even this big, it's all the same. And I haven't done any since then and I never will. So, abortion is a very brutal procedure. Now people will say that it's not a life, it's not a person. But I say that no one's thinking straight here. If somebody was in a coma and you knew they were go going to wake up in nine months, they are potential sentient life. What justification could we have for killing that person? Even if they were a newborn child and they entered into a coma and they said, oh, don't worry, they'll wake up at the age of 10 months. What justification would anybody have to kill that child when we know they are going to wake up? And that's why I've changed. The suffering that these unborn children go through when they are children is horrific. Torn limb from limb in supposedly the safest place a child should be, the mother's womb. It doesn't sit right. And even first stage uh, abortions are done with suction and they pull the fetus apart using a vacuum from a, a, a suction tube. Either way, the, the child is torn to pieces. Now, 
If you've had abortions, I feel your pain. I, I share it with you, I know. For those of you who regret it, uh, you have to forgive yourself and move on. And I give thanks for the forgiveness that I receive from those children of mine that didn't make it into this world and from my God who offers me forgiveness. Now here's the problem, is the argument has moved to this idea that it's all about the woman's choice. It's so irate. But what about the, the woman inside the womb? Because it will be a woman. It is potential life. It's sentient potential life. What about their rights? What about the rights of the father? And people are so emotionally attached to the concept of women's rights, they, they never think about the baby. And I see it from the marches. One side is very, very disorganized and deranged. You see it. This attracts those characters. And I'm not saying all people who are pro-choice are like that, but a lot of them are. You see it. You know, they just seem to be very confused. And if you stop using your carnal mind, your ego, and getting so irate and attached and aggressive, and use your heart, things can change. Because when you see videos like that, I think it stimulates people's hearts. And they say, wow, there's got to be a better way than that. And there is. Children can be born and adopted. Parents can be counseled. Videos like that can be shown in schools to keep young men and women from using sex like a toy, like a, a pleasure tool, to keep it as something sacred. We were married four weeks before Fritzi got pregnant. I think the best thing I ever did was to realize that having children and using sex in the way I was as a young man was devoid of anything natural. Many animals mate for life, they don't cheat because their mating comes from a place of love, not a place of flesh. We can join them in that higher moral stance regarding procreation and sex. We should, we're humans. So, I feel people should understand the procedure and see it. There should even be an ultrasound done of the procedure happening, a scan, so you see it in real life. And it should be shown to young teens who are beginning to be sexually active and show them the consequences of abortion for the life inside you. Just to deter people from being irresponsible with sex like I once was. So I am pro-life. And I think the other arguments like a child that's disabled should be aborted is absolute bullshit. I'm the guardian of mod. More than 60 special needs children here. Of course, I'm not directly their father. I have a huge team, but the guardianship falls on me. I'm the one in charge of all of this family, ultimately. We do teamwork. It's a family effort like all families should be. But I'm the creator of this charity in this children's village. And those children, they might be different to normal children, but it doesn't mean that they are worse off than normal children and I made a video before where a tree had fallen down but was still rooted in the ground and because of it the canopy wasn't blocking the sun and because of it new shoots of life were coming out of the trunk on the side and all the other trees of that nature weren't like that and I said this is my wife said this is an analogy for special needs children and I saw it immediately what she had seen that yes, when a special needs child is born with mental defects or physical defects, 
They are not an upright, normal tree like the rest of us. But just because they're not an upright, upright normal tree doesn't mean it's bad, because it means light can access them in a different way. And if you look at this tree that fell, different types of life were expressing from the trunk. Imagine the trees that way instead of this way. And this way the trunk was growing new life and no other trees like that were doing that because the canopy was blocking the light. And normal humans have a canopy. We have an ego, we have a mind, we have more fleshly desires. We have more ability to lie. Now, when you see these special needs children in our care, some of which can't walk and are in contorted positions, the smiles are the biggest smiles I'll see all day. Because the, the light accesses them in a different way and expresses and grows new life in different ways. And special needs children are a blessing to this world. And that's why I'm opposed to things like Fabian Socialism who feel that if you don't input into society, you, you know, the rest, it, it, it's, it disgusts me. Because what people see as productive in the world is someone who can work and earn and labor. But I tell you now, those children bring more energy into this world in a loving sense than most of the able-bodied children around me do. My son, who has HIV, told me before when he was younger he liked to sit with those children because they were sick, there were so many angels around them. He could feel the angels when he sat with them and it made him happy. And he's talking about an energy that hits many of our guests when they enter the children's home and reduces them to tears. And that energy is love, just being expressed without boundaries by these children. So there's no instance in my eyes anymore where abortion is valid. If a person has been raped and abused, uh, and they cannot survive counseling, then there's a discussion to be had. Because if they're going to hurt themselves, there's a discussion. But to just say it's her womb, it's her choice, what about the life inside her? And the pain it has to go through for her choice? What if it's a woman inside? What about her choice? What about the choice of the men? because millions of us suffer because of the law. Because if I could have took those children and put them inside myself and carried them, I would have. Because my heart loved them. And that's how I know they are not just a blob of cells. I think I covered difficult topic. If you want to leave comments, don't be angry and irate. Be peaceful, be calm, be centered. If you've aborted a child, don't hurt yourself over it. Society's error, in my eyes, that we have provided that option so easily and readily. And as long as you forgive yourself, everything else in this world and beyond this world can forgive you too. That I can promise you. So. I love you all.